Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. We talk about the problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the video. The title makes it pretty clear who's the real a-hole here. That's why I'll try to keep this short. This subreddit is mostly about relationships and getting clarity on one's actions through public opinion. That's why I'm writing about this incident here because I want to know if my reaction was justified or am I just an a-hole who overreacted in her anger? So me and my husband have been married for six years now and we had a pretty good relationship. Never once in all our time together did I even suspect that he'll be cheating on me. I trusted him completely and always gave him the benefit of the doubt even when he tried to reasonably justify his long night outs and so many weekend vacations. I always thought he's the kind of person who needed his space to be happy and I just accepted it. But things escalated really quickly about two weeks ago. When I came back home from work, I found that my husband was already there. He was packing stuff into boxes and I could see some suitcases laying around. I was so confused about what was happening that my first thought was that he's going away on business. That seemed like a logical choice, seeing how he works in sales department of an electronics company, and that might require him to deal with clients all over the world. But then I noticed that the stuff lying around was mine. Now my confusion escalated because if it was a business trip, then why am I going with him? I promptly asked him where we were going and why so urgently. Plus, if we're going on a short vacation, shouldn't he have told me beforehand? And what about my work? Wouldn't I need to take official leave from my company? He didn't say anything instantly though, and I started worrying. Then, once he was done putting away the boxes, he told me that he needs a favor from me. He told me that he needs me to leave the house for some time. Apparently, his best friend is pregnant and he had promised her that he'll take care of her and that's why he'd invited her to live with him. He told me he had decided to stay with her for the next eight to nine months until she gives birth to the baby and since I'm not required to do such favors, he'll need me to go live somewhere else for the time being. He told me that's the best way for me to be happy and unbothered by everything that will go on in the house. And if only I can agree to all this without making the matter complicated, he'd really appreciate it. Complicated? Me? Did he really believe what he said was simple? Am I to believe him like a naive girl that his best friend is pregnant with someone else's baby and he's just doing her a favor? What pissed me off more than anything else is the flimsy excuse he made. Was I worth so less that he couldn't even try to make it look like he's innocent in all this? His reasons sounded so ridiculous that even a five-year-old could tell he's lying. I was so dumbfounded by his excuse that I couldn't help but think that i have finally gone crazy. Then, once I was able to regain my senses, I straight up asked him if everything he's packed is my stuff. He said yes. I was so angry at him for doing this. I chucked the first thing I could get my hands on at him. I slapped him hard and told him he's a worthless piece of the worst crap this world could have. I told him, at this point, I'm not even mad that he cheated on me. I'm more mad at the fact that he cheated on me and didn't even think of trying to make it seem like he's guilty. How can he straight up come here, pack my bags, and make such ridiculous excuses that my self-worth and my own eyes have almost disappeared? I shouted myself hoarse at him, and once I was at a point where I was just about to strangle him to death, I grabbed all his clothes from the wardrobe and threw them out on the street. I took his other stuff and along with him, chucked it all out. I told him I don't need to see his face again. And if he wants to help his so-called best friend and give her a place to stay, he should find a house for himself first, as he is no longer allowed in our current house. Then I shut the door on his face and just crashed on the sofa crying. Once the source of my anger had vanished from my sight, I was able to feel all the emotions that were all jumbled up until then. I was hurt and started crying. My husband, the man I trusted so much and never once thought could hurt me, was cheating on me and ended up getting his best friend pregnant. 
I couldn't even begin to comprehend the sudden change in my life. I called one of my sisters and asked her if she could come over and stay with me for a few days. I told her what happened and that I'm never going back to that man. I told her I'll be taking time to sort out my living conditions at the moment, but then I'm going to get a lawyer and ask for legal advice. There's no way I'm letting this go and I'll make sure I'm compensated properly for all my time and love I invested in my marriage. That jerk is going to pay for everything, especially his best friend that he had so graciously tried to help by kicking his own wife out of the house. I cursed that woman so much at that time. I'm going to serve both of them with a lawsuit and we'll make sure that their life is a living hell. Does that make me an a-hole? Am I overreacting here? Should I just let this all go and try to move on? Is the lawsuit too much stress and should I just get a mutual divorce and be done with it? It's been a week since my original post. Even though I've been going about my life as usual, things aren't just the way they were. At work, I can't focus because every time I try to do something, I'm reminded of how I was betrayed by my husband. I constantly think about the wretch who slept with my husband and got pregnant. I keep cursing her and praying for bad things to happen to her. Does this make me a bad person? Am I really awful to pray for a pregnant person's bad life? I don't even know anymore. I was able to get a lawyer and talk to him about how I can proceed with my case. He listened to my story and told me that it's more common than I think. He told me that most people are betrayed like this, although not every mistress turns out to be pregnant. He told me if I really want to go for a lawsuit, then it's going to be really messy. The judge will ask us many personal questions and that our married life will be torn to shreds just so they can find out who was really at fault here. He told me that even though my victory in the case is 70 to 80 percent guaranteed, the process won't be easy at all and I should think about it hard. If I'm not the kind of person who can't handle jives or being called out for things I didn't do, then I should just opt for a private divorce. That's why I'm writing here again. I've already suffered because of my husband so much. Do I really want to suffer more? Do I want to go to the court every week to fight him more? Even though I desperately want him to pay for what he did, wouldn't the smart choice be to settle, count my losses and move on? I finally decided to go for the lawsuit because I know no matter how much I suffered, I won't be able to move on until I've seen my husband suffer too. My lawyer filed a lawsuit three months ago. And after a lot of running around and jumping through hoops, I was finally able to get a verdict. Since Idaho is very strict with its laws, my husband was charged with a $1,000 fine and two years in jail. His pregnant mistress was also charged with a fine of $500 and four months in jail. I was more than happy to hear that not only my husband, the cheater, would suffer for adultery, but the person he cheated with will also suffer the consequences of sleeping with a married man. Once it was all over, I went out with my sister to celebrate. I know the divorce will take some time to finalize and that I can't call myself single yet, but I'm fully planning to stop moping around and get back out in the world. It was a hard pill to swallow, what with completely trusting someone, marrying them, devoting my life to them, only to end up single again and for that person to not give two ticks about his actions. But I'm slowly getting myself back. My confidence was shaken and it'll take a lot of time for my trust issues to heal. But for now, I can just let go and enjoy myself. I can't keep thinking about my past. I'm glad my sister's here with me and that my family keeps checking up on me. Because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have gotten through any of those emotional turmoils. I've also decided to sell my current house. This house was under my name to begin with, but the memories made in it are now just a bad reminder. So I'm soon thinking of going house hunting just so I can begin everything fresh. The faster I get rid of these past things, the faster I'll be able to heal from all this and move on to the next chapters of my life. NTA. I don't think you're the a-hole here. You did the right thing in serving that awful man with a lawsuit. Adultery is a crime in some states and for a very good reason. I don't know how someone can so easily break their vows as if they're just words and have no meaning. He deserves to suffer for what he did. NTA. No, because you're totally NTA. 
People and their feelings are so fickle these days that they stray from them so easily. And your husband didn't even show any remorse. How can a man who willingly married a woman can so easily forget that, that that woman was once the love of his life? Or is it all a joke to them? Honestly, go slap him with a lawsuit, make him pay. Get that divorce and also take half his assets. Let's see how he treats his girlfriend once his economy has been taken away from him. I'm a 33-year-old male and my wife, 31, have four kids together. Our oldest is 14 and she has severe eczema that she was born with. She recently started using this soap for her eczema that was prescribed by her doctor. And it's over the counter, but I don't remember the brand. And she has a white towel that she can't share with anyone else as directed by her dermatologist. But my cousin was staying with us for the weekend and she's 32. She has two kids that are 13 and 11. But we had spent the day at the park. So, you know, all the kids are dirty and sweaty and they all need a shower. Well, my three youngest went first, then my cousin's 11-year-old, then the 13-year-old. My oldest goes to get in the shower, and about three minutes later, she comes stomping out the back with her towel, soap, and eczema cream in hand. Turns out my cousin's kids used her towel even though we gave them towels to use. Not only that, but they had poured her soap on the towel and into the sink and toilet, and her eczema cream, which has steroids in it, was rubbed into the towel and their skin on the mirror and toilet and tub. My daughter is angry, rightfully so, and we're all confused. So we asked all the kids who did it. It wasn't my youngest three because they said her stuff was put away in the cabinets like normal. And the actual youngest is three years old, who gets bathed by her mother and I. So my cousin's kids confessed to having done it, and my wife and daughter are angry. So their mother was just watching us ask all the kids, and I asked her what she was going to do about them. And she told me they didn't do anything wrong and that they're just kids and that she doesn't know what I want her to do about it. So I blew up at her and I said, your kids are 13 and 11, not three and one. And for them to do that is horrendous. Not only that, but I expect you to replace what they destroyed. The steroid cream is about $65 and the soap is about $30 while the towel was only about $10. But she got mad and said that I can't expect a single mother to pull $105 out of her ass like that. I then told her that I didn't care about her being a single mother and told her to take her kids home. And she did, leaving our bait angrily. After that, I got a couple of angry texts from her mother saying that the kids didn't do anything wrong and that she shouldn't be expected to replace the stuff because she's a single mother. So AITA for making them go home. So I got my money from my cousin and her mother. They split the amount down the middle after multiple threats from my wife and I about small claims court. Their father was made aware of what they did and actually bought a few gifts for my daughter as a way to say sorry. Not only that, but the kids had been forced to apologize over the phone by their father, and he said that whatever money they get goes to her until they reach $105. Even though I tried to tell him no about the payment with the kids, he insisted, saying it was the least he could do. Not only that, but they're no longer allowed in my home and won't be allowed in my home ever again. Wow, NTA. Your cousin is not taking any responsibility for the fact that she raised two middle schoolers who ruin other people's property for fun? Keep insisting she replaced the cream and soap. Your poor kids shouldn't have to suffer because she is a crappy parent. NTA, the biggest thing is that your cousin thought there was nothing wrong with her kids going through your cabinets and destroying other people's things. If she apologized, spoke to her kids, made them apologize, etc., and then told you she's struggling and can't afford $100, and you could, that'd be a different situation, but she didn't care at all. You shouldn't trust them in your house again. My stepdaughter, SD, is 22, so SO, significant other, and I haven't seen SD in nine years. 
When she was 11, she made up stuff about me and my SO. We knew her mom was behind this because we have 50-50 custody, but had been paying her child support like we only had S-D-E-O-W-E. After we had a few kids, SO applied and he had to end up paying the child support. Fighting the accusations and custody battles cost almost six figures in legal fees over the next two years, and I had to end up selling my house, which was my great-grandparents. Selling my house meant I wasn't able to care for my ailing father, and had we not proved the accusations false, it could have resulted in us losing our children. At a therapy appointment, SD told my SO she would keep telling lies if he kept trying to take her from her mom. So he said, okay, contact him when she wants to have a relationship. The mom got what she wanted, child support until SD was 18. We were all devastated. SO sent her birthday and Christmas presents, cards and texts, but they moved and we didn't know where and changed their numbers. Fast forward to now, five months ago, I won the lotto. SO and I aren't married and have separate finances due to him being bad with money and me entering the relationship with more assets and then having to sell my house for SD. But I still take SO's feelings into consideration with money. The money was a significant sum, but not rolling in money. Enough to put a good deposit on the house, deposits on cars, pay off debts, and put money into the kids' education, but still have mortgage, car payments, and bills. It's enough to set us up for life as long as we still work full time. If we're smart with it, we might be able to retire early. We hadn't heard from SD or mom in nine years apart from a message when a child support payment was two days late because SO changed jobs. A week ago, SD reached out to SO over text. A couple of pleasantry texts and then she said she heard we won lotto and was surprised we hadn't contacted her yet to help provide for her. After a bit of awkward stepping around the topic, she brought it back up that she expects a deposit for the house for her and her mom. I've said absolutely not. Not only would that be as much or more than what our own kids would get, but I've already wasted a whole house on her and almost lost my kids in life. I don't want to give her a cent and I want nothing to do with her. I admit I still resent her and everything I had to sacrifice for her lies. My SO agrees a house deposit is out of the question. But his mom and sister got angry at him and now thinks maybe we should give him a little bit. It wouldn't break the bank, but why would I give someone I don't like money when it could be used on my family and those I love? My SO's mom and sister are saying I'm an a-hole for not giving my estranged SD money. So A-I-T-A? NTA, any obligation to SD was paid by your SO's child support. It sounds like she and her mom made you and your SO's life a living hell. And then after nine years of NC, she pops up. She has some balls, I'll say that. All your SO has to tell his family is that it was your ticket. You won the money and want to spend it on your family. Congratulations and enjoy your winnings.